All right, would you like to make love with me on the sidewalk? Make what? Make love. Would you like to make love with me on the sidewalk? Uh, I have any, uh, two exams tomorrow, so... So no love making today. Hi, right, would you like to make love with me on the sidewalk? Some change. Oh, okay. Awesome, thank you so much. Have fun in class. Awesome. Hi, would you like to make love with me on the sidewalk? Okay, happy Thursday. Hi, would you like to make love with me right here on the sidewalk? No, that's okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, would you like to make love with me on the sidewalk? Hi, would either one of you care to make love with me here on the sidewalk? This guy will. <laughs> so, yeah, right. I, I So here I am, boy age 23, living in Denton, Texas. We're at 107 Fry Street, Apartment C, at present. Um, chronically unemployed, so I will not go into the details of the numerous couches and floors I've stayed on in the past 10 months. I spend most of my time, no, all of my time, playing music. And for the past two years, I've been playing under the name of Canary Beat. The lineup's constantly changing. We have a revolving door of musicians that come in and out. Clark! Wake up, man. It's time to fuck. How's it going, buddy? I'm currently playing with my longtime good buddy Clark Bradley on bass. He's a bum just like I am. Bumming around Denton. Unemployed like myself. Also, Al recently just joined the band. Al Bagley on drums. We're about to go on tour, so we needed uh, to find someone quick. And he was a friend of a friend, someone we saw at parties. And knew that he played drums, so he agreed to, to jump on. Being, uh, being homeschooled, 15 years old, when uh, you're going through those rebellious teenage years where your room is your world. And I got really, really into uh, just the whole indie emo sort of scene. Braid. 
is my penultimate favorite band ever. And uh, and I got into that whole Crank Records thing. It's like when Cursive came out, their first album, Mineral, Boy's Life, and then uh, all, all this indie emo stuff. They write things that are completely relatable to being an outsider, I guess. Lonely, heartbroken, blah, blah, blah. And so, uh, yeah, just being 15 alone in my bedroom listening to music, I just uh, picked up a guitar and decided to write songs myself. And it was sort of uh, my outlet. <laughs> Everybody does hate me. Owl hates me. <laughs> uh oh. No, I really don't. Uh oh, he drew a heart at practice last yeah, night. I know. Uh -huh. You said. Oh, yeah. You remember? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally do. Horrible. I don't even know what's going on. You're not filming, are you? I don't know, it's just we're just being honest with ourselves. Our music is 100% sincere now, and it's it's who we are. We're not trying to follow any sort of trend. I uh, can't deny I love that it's the selling sound these days, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, with emo, heartache sells. So it's a good thing uh, we're the for the heartache kids. Because I want to take, I want to take Severin yesterday. Right. And just pass that at least in California to the people that I know. Right. So. I'm going on tour with you, right? Is this security? So yeah. So I can lay the, um, I'll lay the law down, man. I was talking about some punk rock. rock. Yeah. To not hit on us emo kids, not to beat us up. Dude, I fucking played a show left, like a week or two ago at some club in Fort Worth, and literally, like, there was like, I took pictures with like ten different like groups of girls. It was ridiculous. Like, uh, did you get laid? No, I they, I, I hate fuck? that crap, dude. Like, like when people come up to you and they're just like, "You are so hot." Can I take a picture with you? I'm just like, I'm just like, hey, no, okay. I don't see anything. You lucky bastard. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just it bothers me that like you know they're so like in, they're into the wrong thing about it. You know what I mean? Like if a girl came up to me and was just like, "Man, the way you played right. that one song was so hot," I'd be like, "Wow." Welcome to the Life of punk rock. Yeah. You're, you're like, 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 what the like, fuck? What is this shit that they're playing? This isn't punk. You're like, like punk rock. Come on. Whatever. Because you know, you're just like, like seriously, it's just like, come on. Um, 
we just play music? Yeah. We're not looking to get laid? Yeah, like, well, we no, just, it's not even that. It's just yeah. like their, their whole outlook on it is like, oh, these guys are so cool, I want to be like them, and that's not what it right. is at all. We call them groupies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Traditionally, the, the Canary beats a four-piece, so we are looking for a fourth person to go on tour with us when we ran into Eddie Hernandez and knew that he played guitar. So we had him come see if he would even be happy playing the music that we were playing, and he liked it, so he joined up with the group and decided to uh, ditch class for two weeks to go on tour with us and help us out as well. played a show at J&J's first live show before we hit the road and that was amazing the basement was packed and all of our friends were there and it was just the greatest thing so we're pretty 
pretty fucking excited about going on tour. Everything's going so great with practice. Al's working out amazingly well. We're all so stoked. And my parents just bought us a full-size van just because this is this was the dream that I had since I was a kid. So my mom wanted to help me see it through. All right, this is how it's gonna happen. We're gonna get signed, and it's probably happen, I'm hoping, in less than a year. And then I'm gonna call my mom as soon as we walk out of our little contract signing. And I'm gonna say, Ma, buy the biggest fucking house you want to. And and that's my dream is to buy my mom a house. So I'm gonna do that, buy everything I need, and then the first tour is gonna it's gonna go from 300 kids <laughs> to 300,000. I don't know. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna conquer the world. So in 10 years, 10 years, 23, 33. Oh wait, in 10 years I'll be dead. Why? I, I'm not living that long. Uh... I was like, well, what was going on? I was fucking me out today, the other night. And then he was like, well, whatever. And then he just hangs up. So I call him right back the third time talking to him. And then he was like, well, why are you trying to get a hold of Caitlin? And then hangs up. So fourth time, I'm calling him right back. And then that's when I was like, okay, maybe I just misunderstood what he said. So I was like, evidently, I don't know what's going on. So why were you flipping me off? So we have two days before we leave and go on tour. And Al flipped his shit last night out of the blue over something that I don't even understand. So Clark and I are trying to figure this all out. I, uh, yeah, like how you and Eddie were both saying like he was acting normal last night. He just kept flipping me off all night. And he didn't want to talk to me, so... Evidently, he was thinking that I was trying to get a hold of her. I don't know, I don't even have her phone number, and why would I want to talk to his ex-girlfriend anyway? She was rude, and she was mean to him and all of his friends. There's no reason to talk to that girl. She did not treat him right. All this is drama. Where's the ass? No drama, no five. Ow! Ow. I do not have Caitlin's number. There is no reason for me to call your ex-girlfriend. So why would you even think that? I'm trying to figure this out. You, I, you don't even understand. I've been crying all day. Al? Dude, wh why are you acting like this? Why, what did I do? Well, then why are you acting like this? No, it's not. Why are you acting like this? Because this is who I am. Wait. Tomorrow, 
we're going to Santa Fe, and then we're getting wasted and making progress. Then we're playing in Santa Fe on March 1st. And then we're going to Denver. I'm meeting Jess and Emily and having a fucking great time in Denver. And then hopefully we can hang out <laughs> in Denver and find something to get us a little bit of cash. And maybe everyone will buy shirts. And then um, we're going to Las Vegas and no dates there. And um, we're going to get wasted for free. 25 G's. Make 25 G's at the casinos. Have Al lay lots of ladies. And then we're going to California A. If Al's up to it, if Eddie's up to it, the 11th. Of March, we'll play at this art gallery in San Pedro. Maybe, maybe not. And then uh, the last day of the tour is the 12th in Albuquerque. It's some place I was really excited about. And we're coming home. I'm hugging all my friends. And we're gonna get a K and get wasted. How many days are you guys gonna be gone for? From tomorrow till the at least thirteenth. Thirteenth, 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 thirteenth. So nothing goes wrong. Nothing's going wrong. <laughs> it's all gonna work out. I named the first tour the farewell tour because I'm clever. It's been one after another in this life of mine and it seems not a one of them hasn't left me crying. The number's 88 and there's more down the line and I ain't fallen in love with 89. to hear me and I ain't tried to one, but it seems it's only been this way well all of the time and we're breaking hearts and cheating and they did all the lying and I ain't falling in the waiting Not everything went as smoothly as we had hoped and we should have paid attention to the warning signs. One canary flew well over the cuckoo's nest and we came back short one person. fun. I mean, I, I had a blast with those guys. It, it, to be honest, I really, really like spending time with them. It just, on tour, the only times that I was miserable and didn't feel like, you know, this was actually a tour was during our shows. Either Jeremy would be too drunk or, um, like something would happen beforehand, or and or and I'd be pissed off because of last night's show, and we have to do well, and then then it would take me out of the show, and so it, it just wasn't like a good mesh. It didn't feel right. The last night it was a heated argument between me and Al, but the way Al is, he doesn't wait for a response on any argument. He just takes what he thinks he hears, and that's the end of it. I, he was already weird from the night before because we had been getting on to him the entire time about his driving. So the night before, uh, like he was driving drunk and reckless. And, and so that night of that last show or whatever, uh, Eddie and 
Clark and myself were drinking in the van, and uh, he was at the bar, and then he, so I got the keys out of the ignition, and then uh, when he came back, he was just like, where the fuck are the keys? We need to fucking leave. We need to leave now. When I went back to the van and I told him that I wanted to leave early, Clark, Clark told me that the world doesn't fucking revolve around me. Mm -hmm. Like, and that I've been mooching off of him and Eddie and Jeremy, apparently. And it's, it's kind of odd. That was the final straw, I have to say. And, I, I mean, I was a little bit drunk. Jeremy was awake, but he was being kind of passive about the whole thing, and I didn't want Al driving. Very passive. And I was just like, dude, we're not going anywhere. And I was like, no, where are the fucking keys? And I'm like, we're not going anywhere. We all decided we're just going to sleep yeah, until drunk. around 6, 7 in the morning, and then we're going to drive. And he's like, no, you don't understand. We have to leave fucking now. I'm like, uh, this isn't your van. You don't make the decisions. Mm -hmm. And he says, it doesn't matter. Like, we're fucking driving right now. You don't understand. Yeah. I have to get back to fucking Santa Fe right now. Clark said, uh, how do you raise it? You're not fucking driving, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, they, I don't know, they were just arguing back and forth and this and that. And then Clark called him out about <coughs> his, his money and whatever. Because he was trying to say I was a mooch or something. Okay, what happened was we were talking about how, like, Al was driving crazy. He was driving like a fucking maniac. He was putting our lives in his hands. That's all because, the argument, yeah. Because he's upset because his girlfriend broke up with him and whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fucking childish. I was hoping Al would forget about it, like all the keys he threw. He doesn't know where he's at. He's yeah, there. but he didn't, cause like he he would like. Well, cause he picked up Eddie. He kept like grabbing. He well, yeah, like first he was like grabbing around in your ass, trying to find your keys. Well, yeah. And he was like looking around in the back seat. And I'm like, dude, just fucking chill out. Go to fucking right. sleep. Right. And then you were finally like, I don't know. I threw him up there around Eddie. And then <laughs> he gets out of the fucking van, walks around to your side, opens up the door, and he's like lifting up your feet, like looking around. Yeah, I remember and like, that. dude, just really? fucking chill out. Yeah, he fucking lifted sweet. you up. Nice. And then like he got out and he stormed around, like yelling and cursing. And then he picked up his cell phone. I don't know who he called or what he was doing, but like then he got back in the van. And like, I'm trying to go back to sleep, but still trying to keep an eye on what he's doing. And like, I kind of, like, through my eyelids see a light go on. So I like, open one eye, and like, I see him with his cell phone under the dash. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, nothing. And like, I kind of go back to sleep, and then I hear like, thing, like, him pulling at the, like, plastic under the dashboard. And like here, like him pulling shit down. I'm like, are you trying to fucking hotwire the van? Like, no. Why, why, why would you think? No. That's what I woke up in. Yeah, and he's like, no, that's stupid. Like, well, you're up. What are you doing? Nothing. Well, you're obviously fucking doing something. What are you doing? And then like, he starts screaming again about how we need to leave right now. He's got a schedule that he has to keep up. I acted than what I thought was rationally, and what I still today think was the right action for me. And then so he just left. I was at 5 o'clock, and I woke up at 6.30, called him a million times, and he didn't pick up. And it turns out he, uh, he just walked to a Holiday Inn and got a room. So while we've been unshaven and dirty and in the same clothes and sleeping in the van for eight, nine days, whatever it was. Um, he's in a hotel room. <laughs> it's just shitty about how things deteriorated the way they did. I thought things, I knew things were getting a little bit tense. Mm -hmm. We were in a van, we slept in a van for an entire week together without showering. Like, we were smelly, dirty, disgusting, getting irritated with each other. This is the beard that I grew on to are all gone. Is it over his forehead and his forehead? It's 
go to sleep in the van for fucking ever. I think I mentioned that a million times. We should have seen all of us. We are all so fucking dirty. We have these homeless people looking fingernails. We all had beards. Yeah, he's feeling feverish. Oh, okay. oh, that feels good. I can't wait till the shower. That's gonna feel even better. Let's say like Omaha has a record label, a, a national record label even, like Saddle Creek, but Denton does not. And and no one thinks of like Denton as a rock central thing, but we have plenty of bands coming from here. They think of us as like a jazz, a jazz like central area. And jazz in its own right is great, but I think that as far as like the talent in Denton, there's more rock talent than jazz talent. And most of the jazz majors are gonna move away. The rock will always be here. But I, I, I don't know. I, I think I think a lot of a lot of rock musicians like a lot of the rock band like a lot of the jazz majors play in the rock bands around here. Like, that's that's also true. It's snowing. I was driving the airport. Snowing. It's like I'm going to Texas. I get to Texas. Like, like first brain record on vinyl. Most prized possession. If there were no human hostages. I would die for this one record. Yeah, I'm hiding in the fridge. Um, we've been off tour for four hours. No, I'm already I've dumped my insides to the left coast of America, and I don't think they appreciated it. But um, I'm not stopping. And we've had the most dramatic bands on the run experience. I swear we would have boosted anyone's ratings. <laughs> yeah, how wasted is that guy? So, Wait, get a Forget, but it's just like that goes beyond like him still playing drum stores. So what's gonna happen? Where are we gonna be on a record label and have obligations? And uh, I'm gonna freak out and fucking have my mom pay for a flight. Well, I think. Yeah. I just, I don't give a shit about it. I think Al's only really crazy when he drinks yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's, he's crazy, crazy too. Totally. 
He's yeah. crazy all the time. His mom's legally insane. Yeah. That's not true, but Al's been diagnosed probably too. No, Al is like normally when he's Oh no, he's crazy. I'm not even But yeah, even when he's not drinking, he's like freaking insane. He's a liar. He lies about everything. He seems. Close to uh, like okay normal when he's not drinking. It's just you can like tell when he's been drinking because it's just blah, I mean, that's a big asshole. Like, like, at fuck party, all of y'all. At a party, he was literally next door. I was, was there. there. Yeah, and he sat there and we were talking. He's like, fuck off. What do you want? You want to eat my back? He, I, I was like there hanging out with him, and I asked him to take me home because he's being a fucking shithead and he like I was like if it's not an inconvenience you know just like haha and he's like well it is I was like whoa take me home now and we got his truck for uh to take me home and he like someone parked in the way and he told me he was just like fuck it you're gonna have to walk home and he just like got the car and stormed out and I like started walking behind him and some random guy that I've never even seen in my life walked past me and was like be careful for Al he's real crazy and I was just like who are you and I fucking had to walk home Whenever we came back from tour, I had a whole well of inspiration, so I started writing songs about the tour to be released on a five-song EP titled The Farewell Tour EP. We went ahead and tried Clark out on drums, since we still had Al's drum set. Because Al left all of his shit and us in California. Then Al started coming around again to get all of his shit back and uh, since we were still pissed off at him, we decided to fuck with him. And he got pissed off at us, and so he uh, tried to start a fight with me. When I got back, all I get from my friends is this sense of negativity, and it was very, very misconstrued how I feel actually things were and what had happened on tour, and so it just got way out of hand. It's not like I wanted to be friends with them anymore. There was just no other outlet because they were not cooperating with me. This was just the pinnacle of it. I couldn't take any more, and I was just tired of being walked over, and I wanted my stuff back, and it just got to this point where I couldn't take any more. Uh, you're the one who started this. You started this? Fuck that, man. Charlie fucked up. You punting my shit? I I felt intense fear, hatred, looking for anything. An apology, them giving my stuff back, and an, an intense, intense hatred for Jeremy and, and Clark. But I feel that Jeremy was actually the, the hand behind the puppet, like in terms of what has been happening. I had to confront them. They weren't willing to give me any of my stuff back. It's just that they were being so uncooperative and basking in the fact that I was so, so frustrated with me getting my stuff back, like my clothes and whatnot, and half of it being gone, and them saying, uh, we don't know where it is. It's just like scattered about. We don't know. And I actually know that they were enjoying that. And I couldn't take it anymore. I needed my shit back.
fucker! Last night, I did what I thought was right and which was wrong. I just got tired of just sitting back and letting him and people walk all over me. Practicing with Clark on drums wasn't working out too well, so we knew Trent uh, through a friend and started practicing with Trent on drums at his grandparents' warehouse, and that worked out fucking amazingly well, so, so Trent became the new drummer of the Canary Beat. The Canary Beat has been around for two years, seen eight previous members, one tour, 3,000 miles, and as long as I'm alive, there's always going to be the Canary Beat. There's a cursive army, and then there's the Canary Beat army. We just haven't quite got our troops all assembled yet. to think about life. <laughs> uh, really cliche to uh, to play emo and uh, and then just say you hate life or you're depressed because I'm definitely not always depressed. Although um, I think the people that are closest to me would like to believe that uh, I set myself up for uh, for heartache just to uh, just to feel feel sad just to write songs or whatever. But the truth is, I actually really love life, love living. Um, so much to do. I mean, there's music, there's friends, there's great loves. Lots of uh, opportunity to do anything. Living in Denton is awesome. There's so many friends here. Uh, so I don't know. There's a lot of drama. That's for sure. But there's a lot of a lot of great people in Denton. Bad. 
Just might be stuck here And I'm hoping you 